Yo, what's good, man? It's your boy DT3, man, and I'm back at you with another video, man. New media, notification game. God Squad. It's what it is, man. Look, y'all got to keep that same energy, man. The shit that I'm seeing that y'all saying about Jaime is fucking ridiculous, though. For real, man. You know, about you know, Jaime showed leaps and bounds that he has improved. If you look at Jaime from... His last fight with Dennis Hogan. Hell, even the fight before that. Hell, no. Look at the fight where he fought Saddam Ali. The fight when he fought Saddam Ali, right? And the fights after that, up until this previous one. You can tell that Jaime ain't got no head movement. He just come forward, wing and ding. He's there to be hit. All the shit. Right? No head movement. No nothing special, right? Okay. So... This last fight, when he fights O'Sullivan, totally different guy. Totally different. Sharper. His jab was lovely. He was setting up his punches. Showed good head movement. Mind you, prior to this fight, Jaime has shown little to no head movement. In this fight, he showed head movement. He showed waist movement. He showed that he can actually box instead of just being this wing and ding typical Mexican style brawler. You gotta give him his credit for that. That's like if Deontay Wilder comes into this Tyson Fury fight. Now mind you, Wilder ain't known for head movement. Wilder ain't known for just having just a masterful jab that he utilizes the whole fight. Or he's winning the fight based on his jab. Wilder is not known for that. Wilder is known for taking a few shots here or there, losing the early rounds, waiting for you to get tired, and then he catching you with the right hand, putting you on your ass. That's what Wilder is known for. Let Wilder come into this next fight with Tyson Fury, slipping punches, weaving, establishing his jab, making Fury eat that jab a whole hell of a lot more than he would with his right hand. He's setting his right hand up. He's setting the jab up. I'm going to give dude his props. I'm going to give him his props. So why y'all can't do that same shit with Jaime Munguia, bro? Jaime Mogia don't look like he the same dude that fought Saddam Ali. He don't look like the same dude that fought Dennis Hogan. He don't look like that same guy. Totally different dude. Yet and still, y'all won't give him his credit. Y'all refuse to give that man his credit, his just due as a fighter. Tank Davis only has a little over, what, 20 something fights, right? Y'all not saying he green. You know why you're not saying he green? Because of the physical God-given gifts that he got. He didn't have to train to get to that certain skill set. He didn't have to train like that. He didn't have to train to have the agility that he had. He didn't have to train to have the power that he has. He didn't train for that. He had to train to get certain little shit, you know, shoulder rolling, slipping, all that type of stuff. Yeah, you have to train that. But his speed couldn't coach that. His power didn't, that wasn't coached. Okay? All that his agility wasn't coached. His, all, all that his elusiveness was not coached. Those are all God given abilities that Tank brings to the table by himself. So you take what he got naturally, you teach him how to slip a few punches, how to shoulder roll, get his defense up. Now you have a talented fighter that has a lot of potential. Will he reach the potential is yet to be seen. Will Jaime Munguia reach his full potential is yet to be seen. But to shit on Jaime for the improvements that he has made is fucking ridiculous. Okay? So, because Jaime is not as gifted as a Tank Davis or a Floyd Mayweather who just has natural gifts, you shit on them while they're making progress. But you got fighters like Tank Davis and Deontay Wilder and even Errol Spence who are not progressing as fighters and don't even have as many fights as Jaime Munguia. The only person that I mentioned that has as many fights as Jaime Munguia, if not more, is Deontay Wilder. And yet and still, he hasn't shown no real improvements in his boxing skills. Period. Okay? Tank Davis has yet to show us 
what he can do against somebody who is literally not going to back down from him, who is not afraid of the mystique that is of Javante Tank Davis. So until I see Tank fight somebody of that caliber, I'm not sold on Tank. All Tank is to me is a guy that has potential that hasn't reached his full potential yet because he hasn't fought nobody to bring that potential out of him. So until he does that, all he is is a talent. He's just a raw talent. Will he ever reach his potential? That's up to Al Heyman and Leonard Ellaby and the rest of his team. But right now, he's not really living up to his potential based on the opposition that he is facing. Same thing with Deontay the Browns bomber, Wilder. Same thing with Jermail. And no, I can't say that with Jermail. I can't say that with Jermail because after he just fought Tony Harrison, I can honestly say that Tony Harrison was a legit opponent for Jamel Charlo. I'm waiting for Jamal Charlo to finally step up and get a guy that's willing to stand in front of him and really fight him and not be caught up in the so-called mystique of the Jamal Charlos of the world. Straight up. Because I do feel that Jamal Charlo is a little green. He don't move his head. Like, he don't move his head at all, really. You don't see Jamal Charlo really slipping punches. You see Jamal Charlo coming forward, winging and dinging, Mexican-style fight. He don't, he's not slick, he's not elusive. He's a, he's a fast, strong dude. When you fight somebody that's going to take away your speed and your strength, what, would, what does Jamal have? He don't have no boxing skills to fall back on if somebody takes away his natural God-given abilities. Do you understand what I'm telling you? What do these fighters have to fall back on when someone takes away their God-given abilities? Jaime Monguia's God-given talent, he got heart, he's a warrior, he's a come-forward fighter. Okay? And he's showing that when he comes forward and he wants to trade with you, when you when you beat him at that, okay, I can't beat you coming forward trying to wing it, ding it, pound all. You know what I got to do? I got a box. And he showed that. And a lot of you guys ain't giving him credit for that. I myself was never high on Jaime Munguia. I myself give Jaime Munguia shit. You could ask IBFP. I give IBFP shit about Jaime Munguia. But after the show that he put on, I got to get a man credit. And if Javante Davis, Jamal Charlo, Deontay Wilder, if they show leaps and bounds of, of progression in their skill set, I'm going to give you guys y'all credit. Right hand or guy. Straight up. But you guys got to keep that same energy, man. You got to. Jaime Munguia has 30, 34, 35 fights. Tank Davis barely got 25. Uh, Earl Spence got 25. Deontay Wilder got 40. If you like the video, like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon so you be notified every time I hit y'all with some hot shit. Follow me on Instagram at DT underscore boom. Follow me on Twitter at DBoyWSO. Man, you already know who this is, man. It's your boy, DT3, New Media, Notification Game. God Squad. It's what it is, man. One.